live from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live in San Jose at Forager Eatery, a really cool place down the street from the Strata Data Conference. This is our 10th big data event. We call this Big Data SV. We've done uh, five here, five in New York, and this is our day one of coverage. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host George Gilbert, and we're joined by a CUBE alumni, Jacques Eistock, the head of data from Pivotal. Welcome back to theCUBE, Jacques. Thank you, it's great to be here. So, um, just recently you guys announced, Pivotal announced, the GA of your Kubernetes-based Pivotal Container Service, PKS, um, following this initial beta that you guys released last year. Tell us about that. What's the main idea behind PKS? So as, as we were talking about earlier, uh, we've had this opinionated uh, platform as a service for the last couple of years. It's taken off, but it really requires a very specific methodology for deploying microservices and, and kind of next gen uh, applications. And what we've, what we've seen with the groundswell behind Kubernetes is a, a very seamless way where we can uh, not just do our opinionated applications, but can do any applications leveraging Kubernetes. In addition, it actually allows us to, again, kind of have an opinionated way to work with stateful, um, uh, stateful data, if you will. And so what you'll see is two of the main things that we have going on, again, if you look at, those, at, at both of those products, um, they're all managed by a thing that we call Bosch. And Bosch allows for not just the ease of installation, but also the actual operation of not the entire platform. And so what we're seeing is this ability to do day two operations around not just the apps, not just the platform, but also the data products that run within it. And you'll see later this year, as we continue to evolve, um, you know, our data products running on top of either the PKS product or the PCF product. Quick question before you jump in, George. What are, so you talked about some of the technology benefits and reasoning for that. From a customer perspective, what are some of the key benefits that you've designed this for or challenges to solve? So, so I'd say the key benefits, one is ease of, or convenience and ease of installation and, and operational, uh, operationalization. Uh, Kubernetes seems to have uh, basically become the standard for being able to, to deploy containers, whether it's on-prem or off-prem, and having an enterprise solution to do that is something that customers are actually really looking uh, towards. In fact, uh, we had sold about a dozen uh, of these uh, products even before it was GA. There's so much excitement around it. Um, but, but beyond that, uh, I think we've been really focused on this idea of digital transformation. So, so Pivotal's whole uh, talk track really is uh, changing how uh, companies build software. And, and I think the, the introduction of PKS really takes us to the next level, which is um, that there is no digital transformation without data. And, and basically Kubernetes and PKS allow us to uh, implement that and perform for our customers. This is really a facilitator yes. of a company's digital transformation journey. Correct, in a, in a very easy and convenient way. And I think, you know, whether it's our generation or, you know, or you know, what's going on in, in just technology, but everybody is so focused on convenience, push button, I just want it to work, I don't want to have to, to dig into the details. So this picks up on a theme we've been sort of pounding on for a couple years on our side, which was the infrastructure was too hard to stand up and operate. Yeah. But now that we're beginning to solve some of those problems, talk about some of the use case. We, you know, let's pick GE, because that's flagship customer. Sure. Start with maybe some of the big outcomes, the big business outcomes they're shooting for, and then how the Pivotal products map into that. Sure, so, so there's a lot of use cases. Obviously GE is both a, uh, a large organization as well as an investor inside of Pivotal. Uh, a lot of, lot of different things we could talk about. One um, that comes to mind out of the, out of the gate is you know, we've got a, a data suite that we sell in addition to PKS, in addition to PCF. And within that data suite are a couple of products, Greenplum being one of them. Uh, Greenplum is this open source MPP data platform. Uh, one, of the, one of the probably most successful implementations within GE is this ability to actually consolidate a bunch of different uh, ERP data and, and have people be able to query it. Again, cheaply, easily, effectively, uh, you know, and there were a lot of different ways that 
you can implement a solution like that. Um, I think what's attractive to, uh, to these guys, specifically around Greenplum, is that it leverages you know, standard ANSI SQL, it scales to petabytes of data, uh, we have this ability to do on-prem and off-prem. I was actually at the Gartner conference uh, earlier this week and walking around the, the show, it was, it was actually somewhat eye-opening to me to be able to see that, you know, if you look at just that one product, um, there isn't really a competitive product that was being showcased that's open source, multi-cloud, you know, uh, analytical in nature, et cetera. And so I, I think, you know, for, again, to get back to the GE scenario, what was attractive to them is everything that they're doing on-prem, we actually can move to the cloud. Whether it's Google, Azure, Amazon, they can literally run the exact same product and the exact same queries. Uh, if you extend it beyond that particular use cases, there are other use cases that are more real-time. And again, inside of the data suite, we've got another product called Gemfire, which is an in-memory data grid. It allows for this rapid ingest, so you can kind of think and imagine whether it's jet engines or whether it's uh, wind turbines, data is constantly being generated, and our ability to take that data in, in real-time, ingest it, actually perform um, analytics on it as it comes in. So, Again, kind of a loose example would be, if you know the heat tolerance for a wind turbine is between this temperature and this temperature, do something. Set, set an alarm, shut it down, et cetera. If you can do that in real time, you can actually save literally millions of dollars by not letting that turbine fail. Okay, so it sounds here where uh, the, the Gemfire product and the Greenplum DBMS are very complementary. You know, one is speed and one is sort of throughput. Um, and when you, you know, what, this is, we've seen almost like with Hadoop an overreaction like in turning uh, a, a coherent platform into a bunch of building blocks. Yes. And with Greenplum you have sort of everything packaged together again. Is, is would it be uh, proper to think of Greenplum as combining the best of the data lake and the, and the data warehouse where you've got the data scientists and data engineers to satisfy with one with what would have been another product and the business analysts and you know sort of uh, uh, BI crowd satisfied with the same product but what would have been another so so, so I'd say you're spot on what, what what is super interesting to me is one uh, I've been doing data warehousing now for I don't know 20 years uh -huh. and and for the last five I've kind of felt like data warehouse, just the term was equivalent to like the mainframe. So, so I actually uh, kind of relegated it to the, I'm not, I'm not going to use that term anymore. But with the advent of the cloud and with pro other products that are out there, we're seeing this resurgence where the data warehouse is cool again. And I think part of it is because uh, we, we had this shift where uh, we had really expensive products doing you know, the classic EDW and it was too rigid and it was too expensive. And so Hadoop sort of came on and everyone was like, oh hey, this is, this is really easy, this is really cheap, you know, we can store whatever we want, we can do any kind of analytics. And I, I think, uh, and I was saying before, I, I think the love affair with you know, piecing all of that together uh, is, is kind of over. And I also think, and you know, it's, it's funny, it was really hard for organizations to successfully stand up a, a Hadoop platform, and, and I think the, the metric that we hear is 50% of them fail, right? So, so part of that, I believe, is because there just aren't enough people to be able to do you know, what, what needed to be done. And so, so interestingly enough, because of those failures, because the Hadoop ecosystem didn't quite integrate into you know, the classic enterprise, products like Greenplum are suddenly you know, very popular. Uh, I was just seeing our, our downloads uh, for the open source part of, of Greenplum, and we're literally, you know, at this juncture, seeing about 1,500 distinct customers leveraging the open source product. Um, so I, I kind of feel like we're on this upswing of, of getting everybody to understand that you, know, you don't have to go to Hadoop to be able to do structured and unstructured data at scale. You can actually use some of these other products. So, sorry George, oh. quickly, being in the industry for 20 years, we talk about you know, culture a lot. It, and it was, oh, cultural shift, people started embracing Hadoop. Oh, we can dump everything, the data lakes turned into swamps. I'm curious though, what is that, maybe it's not a cultural shift, maybe it's a cultural roller coaster of like, uh. you know, mainframes are cool again, like you said. Give us your perspective on how you've helped companies like GE sort of, as technology waves come, really kind of help design 
a, and maybe drive a culture that embraces the velocity of this change. Sure, so, so one of the things that we do a lot is uh, help our customers uh, better leverage technology and, and really kind of train it. So, so you know, our, we have a couple different uh, aspects to Pivotal. One of them is our labs aspect. And, and effectively, that is our ability to uh, teach people how to better build applications, how to better do data science, how to better do um, data engineering. Now, uh, when we come in, we have an opinionated way to do all of those things. Um, and, and when a customer embraces it, uh, it actually opens up a lot of doors. So we're somewhat technology agnostic, which, which uh, aids in, in your question, right? So we can come in, we're not trying to push a specific technology, we're actually trying to push a, a methodology and a, a, an end goal or a solution. And I think, you know, oftentimes, of course, that end goal and solution is best met by our products, but to your point about the, the roller coaster, you know, it seems as though, as, as we have evolved, there is a notion that data um, will, from an organization, will all come together in a, a common object store, and then the ability to quickly be able to, to spin up an analytical or a, uh, a programmatic interface into that data is super uh, important. And, and that's where we're kind of leaning in, and that's where I think you know, this idea of convenience, being able to you know, push button, instantiate a, a Greenplum cluster, or push button, instantiate a Gemfire uh, grid so that you can do uh, analytics or you can take actions on it is so super important. You said something that's really, what sounds really, really important, which was we want to get what sound what you were it sounded like you were alluding to a single source of truth, and then you spin up whatever compute and you know bring it to the data. But there's a, an emerging, still early sort of school of thought, which is maybe the single source of truth should be sort of uh, a hub around a set of real time streams. Sure. Yeah. Um, how does how does uh, Pivotal play in that uh, role in that world? So, so I, I, there are a lot of products that. Um, that can help facilitate that, uh, including our own. I would say that there is a, a broad um, ecosystem that kind of says, if I was going to start an organization today, there are a number of, of vertical products that I would need in order to be successful with data. One of them would be you know, just standard relational database. You know, and if I, if I pause there for a second, if you look at it, you know, there's definitely a move towards building microservices so that you can glue all the pieces together. Those microservices actually require you know, smaller, simpler, relational type databases, or, or perhaps NoSQL type databases on the front end, um, but they become simpler and simpler, which is where I think if I was Oracle or, or, or some, of the, some of the more uh, stalwarts on the relational side, you know, it's not about how many widgets you can put into the, into the database, it's really about its simplicity and, and performance. From there, uh, having some kind of message queue or, or um, system to be able to take those, the changes and the updates of that data down the line so that not so much uh, IT providing it to an end user, but more uh, self-service, you know, being able to subscribe to the data that I actually care about. And then, and then uh, again, going back to the, the simplicity, uh, me as an end user being able to take control of my destiny and, and use whatever product or whatever technology makes the most sense for me. And, and, if, and if, I, if I sort of dovetail just a little bit on the side of that, we focused so much this year on convenience and uh, flexibility that, that I think um, it, is now, uh, it is now at a spot where all of the innovations that we're doing, say in like the Amazon Marketplace, for example, on Greenplum, all of those innovations are, are actually leading us to the same types of innovations in data deployments on top of Kubernetes. And so, so like two of them that come to mind, uh, I, I felt like I was in, in front of a, a group last week and we were presenting some of the things that we've done. And uh, one of them was self-healing of Greenplum. And so it's often been said that you know, these big uh, analytical solutions are really hard to operate. And, and through our innovations, we're actually able to have, if a, if a segment goes down or a host goes down or there's network problems, through the implementation, the system will actually self-heal itself. And so all of a sudden the operational uh, needs become quite a bit less. Uh, in addition, we've also uh, created this um, 
automatic snapshotting capability, which allows, our, I think our last benchmark, we did about a petabyte of data in, in less than three minutes. And so suddenly you've got this operational um, stalwart, almost a database as a service without really being you know, a service, really just this, this living, breathing thing. And that kind of dovetails, like I said before, back to where we're trying to, to uh, make all of our products um, perform in a way that customers can just use them and not worry about you know, having to, to, the nuts and bolts of it. So last question, we've just got about 30 seconds left. Um, you mentioned, you know, we talked about a lot of technologies, um, but you, men you mentioned methodology. Is that approach from, from Pivotal, do you think one of the defining competitive advantages that you deliver to the market? It, it is 100% one of our defining, uh, our defining things. Our methodology is what is enabling our customers to be successful. Uh, and, and it actually allows me to you know, kind of say, uh, we partnered with PostgresConf uh, and, and Greenplum Summit this year is, is next month in, in April. And, and the theme of that is hashtag data tells the story. And so from our, our standpoint, Greenplum is continuing to uh, take off, Gemfire is continuing to take off, Kubernetes is continuing to take off, PCF is continuing to take off, but we believe that digital transformation doesn't happen without data, and we think data tells the story. So I'm, I'm here to encourage everyone to come to Greenplum Summit. I'm also here to encourage everyone to share their stories with us on Twitter, hashtag data tells the story, uh, so that we can continue to broaden this ecosystem. Hashtag data tells the story. Jock, thanks so much for carving out some time this week to come back to theCUBE and share what's new and differentiating at Pivotal. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host George Gilbert. We are live at Big Data SV, our 10th Big Data event. Come down here, see us. We're in San Jose at Forger Eatery. We've got a great party tonight, and also tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. we've got a breakfast briefing you won't want to miss. Stick around, we'll be back with our next guest after a short break.